We want to look at one more aspect of rational expressions. What if I have a more complex version of those expressions? So maybe I kind of have a mix of fractions inside of fractions. That actually is a complex rational expression. It's a rational expression, so a bunch of fractions that has one or more rational expressions inside of it. So just fractions inside of a big fraction. Fractions inside of a big fraction. And we need to be able to simplify these because these are really ugly. We want a nicer form, if possible. And there's two different methods uh, to solve these or simplify these expressions down. We're going to look at both methods and we're going to use the same exact problems for each. So you can see we still get the same answer, but there's two different ways that we can go about it. So whichever one you're most comfortable with, you can run with. The first method is using that LCD to our advantage. If I multiply by the least common denominator of all of the denominators inside of my complex rational expression, I can clear out all of those denominators and deal with nice numbers. So we're going to look at that one first. So first example, we want to simplify this complex rational expression. So we need to take each denominator and break it down into its factors. So my first denominator is 2, second one is 4, 6, and 8. And we want the least common denominator between all four of these. So it's helpful to break it down into their prime factorizations, so we can see what we're working with. And I know that my LCD is going to have to be divisible by 8, or 6, or 4, or 2, as we're designing it to do. So I know that my LCD is going to be divisible by 8. So I'm going to take into account three factors of 2, or the prime factorization of 8. And we need to look between the rest of them and see if we're missing anything. So, comparing with 6, what is my LCD missing that this other one has? A factor of 3. And we want to check with the other ones as well. What is this one missing that this one has? Nothing. What is this one missing that my last one has? Nothing. We've already taken into account those factors of 2. So if we multiply those all together, 8 times 3 gives me 24. So 24 is going to be divisible by both 2, 4, 6, and 8. And it's the smallest number. So we want to take that and multiply everything up top by 24 and everything down below by 24. Because when I'm multiplying by the same thing divided by the same thing, what am I really multiplying by here? 1. We're just changing what it looks like. So as we distribute it to each piece, I've got 24. It needs to go to my first piece and to the second. So I've got 24 divided by 2 plus 3 fourths times 24. And the same story down below. I've got that 5 6 times 24 and I'm subtracting 3 eighths times 24. So we want to be able to simplify these. See what we get out. 24 divided by 2 gives me 12, a nice whole number. We got rid of the denominators. And I know that 24 is divisible by each of those denominators. So I'm going to do the division first to work with smaller numbers. So 24 divided by 4 gives me 6, and 6 times 3 gives me 18. So I'm adding 18 onto there. Got rid of all the denominators. Awesome. And down below, what is this term going to simplify into? So let's do the division. 24 divided by 6 gives me 4. 4 times 5 gives me 20. And last, I'm subtracting what value? So 24 divided by 8 gives me 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 
and we can handle that now. Adding on the top, subtracting on the bottom. What are we looking at? 30 over 11. And we always want to ask, can we simplify it down any farther? No. 11 is prime. So when we're multiplying in this way, what happens? We're clearing out all of the fractions in the numerator and in the denominator. So we're clearing out all of those fractions. So let's go ahead and look at a similar example, but now we've got some variables involved. Down below, a little bit more to pay attention to. But the same story, what are each of my denominators? I have x, 2x, 3x, and 4x. So as we break those into their primes, these ones are already broken down, and 4 consists of 2 times 2. And I also have that factor of x. So what is my LCD in this case? I know it's going to be divisible by all of these, so I'm just going to pick one to start with. And we need to see, what is my LCD missing that this other factor has? Factor of 3. And to the next one, what are we missing here that this one has? Nothing. We've already taken into account both factors. And what is our LCD missing that the first one has? Nothing. We've already taken that into account. So our LCD in that case is what? I've got 4 times 3 will give me 12. So we need to take that and multiply it to every single term. So again, everything up top needs to be multiplied by 12x. Everything down below multiplied by 12x. Because when we're dividing, same thing over the same thing. It's 1, just changing what it looks like. So let's distribute to each of those. Let's see what we get coming out. So I've got 12x times 3 over x plus 12x times 1 over 2x and what's in our denominators? 12x times 1 over 3x and minus 12x times 3 over 4x. So we need to simplify these. See what comes out. Again, I'm going to do the division first, since our LCD is designed to be divisible by each of those pieces. So if I get 12x divided by x, what do I get? 12. The x's cancel out. 12 times 3 is 36. And what am I adding to that? This term. 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. x divided by x, gone. Those are going to cancel. Down below, x divided by x will be gone, and I've got 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. And what value are we subtracting off? So 12 divided by 4 gives me 3. 3 times 3 gives me 9. And as we look at those variables, do we have any on that last term? x divided by x, those are gone. So that's simplified down pretty nicely. Up top, what are we looking at? 4 to 2, and down below we've got negative 5. Last one for us to do together before you try some. As we start practicing with these, we don't have to write down uh, the prime factorizations of all of our denominators. If we can see it right off the bat, we can run with it. So looking over here, my denominator is 1 and 1. We don't need to take those into account. So I'm looking, what is my LCD between x and x squared. x squared. So we need to take that again and multiply it everywhere up top, everywhere down below. Same thing divided by the same thing as one, changing what it looks like. So we'll distribute to each piece. To the first one I get x squared, and I've got x squared divided by x on the next term. Again, distributing to each piece. Down here, I've got another x squared minus x squared over x squared. We can simplify that down pretty quickly. Up top, I've got x squared minus what? x squared divided by x. I've got one factor left up there. 
and down below, x squared minus what value? 1. But we want to simplify as far as we can go. Can we factor that at all? Common between the top that we can take out is a factor of x. When we do that, what are we left with? x minus 1. And my polynomial down here is a binomial, two terms, and it is a difference of squares. How does it factor? x plus 1 and x minus 1. Now that we have products everywhere, we can look. What can we cancel out top and bottom? One factor of x minus 1, and we're simplified. x over x plus 1. All right, so we want to make sure that we break it down all the way to the end, as far as we can go. So go ahead and use this method and simplify these two problems. So what is your least common denominator of this first example? I need to take into account factor of 2, 3, and x. So all together, 6x. And everything up top needs to be multiplied by 6x everything down below needs to be multiplied by 6x. So what are we looking at? Let's start simplifying. I've got 6 divided by 2 gives me 3, and x times x gives me x squared on that term. And for the next one, 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. 2 times 2 gives me 4. And what about my... Um, Variables there, x times x again gives me another x squared. Down below, what are we looking at? 6x divided by x will give me 6 left over. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and x times x again is x squared. So we can combine those terms up top. I've got 7 factors of x squared all over 6 minus 3x squared. But could we write that denominator any different? I can combine our like terms up top, but is there anything that I can factor out? Just to see if I can cancel anything in the end. So common between these two is the 3 that I can take out. When I do that, I'm left with 2 minus x squared. So we can look when it is factored. Is there anything that we can cancel top and bottom? No. And for the next one, our LCD in this case, what was it? Between 1, x, 1, and x squared, we need x squared. Multiplying everything up top by x squared, everything down below. What do we get coming out? Into my first term, I've got x squared. Second one, I'm adding x squared divided by x. I've got one factor. And down below, what are we looking at? Another x squared minus what? 1. So it's very similar to what we saw before, that last problem that we did together, but we have different signs. So something else is going to happen. Common between these, we need to factor x. When we take that out, we're left with x plus 1. And down below, again, we have a difference of squares. So our answer is very different because here our x plus 1 factors are going to cancel. And we're left with x over x minus 1. Always want to break it down as far as we can go.